Hey, hello. So I went live without any waiting waiting screen. That's okay. Uh, who needs a waiting screen? Uh, all right. What should we do? Well, I know what should we do. Let's let's look what happened. Oh. I'm watching myself. I shouldn't be. All right, so my page got a little broken and uh, because I upgraded, it seems that the reason for that is that I upgraded Tailwind to the latest version. Or is this post CSS? I don't know. I'll look at that. Maybe I will look at that during the stream. We'll see. Um, but uh, yesterday I wrote a blog about about how to improve your custom command blocks and that's something I want to show you. I like to explore these blocks uh, on my streams as well. I think that's that's good because some, some people like uh, seeing blocks, uh, reading blocks, some people like watching videos and I'm definitely going to cut this into a video let me just make it bigger so you can see that yeah now we're talking okay so yeah this is the this is the block I'm exploring a couple of ways of how you can how you can improve your lock messages so let me just maybe yeah let's open yeah let's open vs code and try to try to see what that is all about uh yeah we're going to be using typescript for that so let's open code and see what we can do i'll open my project and that will be the Trello app, as is usual. And you know what? I'm going to make it big like this. Let's make it, oh, my camera disconnected. You cannot see me anymore. Let me, let me fix that. That is no good, what happened? Oh, okay, we're good. So yeah, let's let's actually. I'm actually going to delete all these changes. Remove that. That was when I was writing the blog, so I don't need that any anymore. But the Cypress JSON, I am going to keep. Okay. So let's. Let's let's do something. Let's uh, integration. Okay, I'm going to delete this. Close this all. Is this big enough? Hopefully. But let me let me start my app. npm start. Okay. Let me know, let me tell people on Discord that we are live. Hey. So now I'm going to wake up everybody. Well, nobody's sleeping probably, maybe. Uh, all right, so my app is running. Let's run another another window. Ooh, that is small. npx Cypress open. Uh, 
And I got a couple of commands here. Not sure which I use in, in the in the main branch. Oh, that's a master branch. Okay, I should probably rename that. Uh, yeah. So let's let's write let's write uh, a new test. How about test dot ts? Because why not? I'm going to open that in my browser in my browser oh failed to connect uh, it eventually connected so that's good okay i'm going to put this on full screen then i'll put my browser window on full screen can i do it like this yeah i can okay good uh yeah so we have no tests, so probably we should add an it block. Let's write an it block, and that would be new test. So pretty boring. So we got no commands. So let's let's add one. Let's add a visit command. And good. We are visiting. That's good. All right. So let's. Um, so let's talk about those those custom commands. So first off, let's do let's do what? Are we going to add a board? That would be our command. Maybe. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, so I will use Cypress commands add API, and I'm going to name my command add board. Yeah. So what I'll do in this. is basically I will click on the create board, fill in the input and hit enter. That should be good enough. So let's get our command, get, what should we get? We should get the create button. So let's open the playground, cool. Just do it like this. I'm going to click that. After I click that, I'm going to get that input element. That is the one that's over here. So let's select that. Good. And we are going to type in, type the, yeah, there's going to be some input in there. So let's type board name. Let's name it board name and that we're going to pass as an argument. So board name and let's make it like this board name and then we'll type enter. So yeah, if you're by any chance not familiar with this, so I am using backticks over here and whatever is in in uh, the dollar sign and curly brackets that is that's just going to take the value of that of that vari uh, variable and whatever is not in those brackets is just going to inter interpret as text so yeah the dollar sign is important here if i would type a dollar sign here that would interpret this as a variable but since it's not it's just a text and a type command if you're using Cypress, then type command is something that can take these special characters. And if they're in these brackets, you can find uh, it interprets it as enter. So if I want to use that, oops, I want to copy this. If I want to use that, I'll just type CY add board and oh, not API. I have a couple of commands and they're already typed. Oh, hi, Michael. Nice to meet you. And yeah, so if I add board and uh, call it new board or something boring, uh, save my test. I think I should be okay. Yeah, good. So it did. It did everything I wanted. So basically, this custom command is just a sequence of my commands, and it does what it's supposed to do. 
All right, so, but as you can see, like there's no trace of, of my custom command here. It's just, it's just taking these steps. And I think that's fine. Like overall, um, that's, that's quite okay, I think. Because if anything fails here, then you just get to the point of, uh, all of the failure. And you can look into, yeah, you can look into the exact, uh, place where, where anything is failing. So that is good. Uh, but let's, let's add some logging. Uh, oh, I I'll share with you. When I was writing my blog yesterday, I found out that this thing, I, I forgot how, <laughs> how it's called. I, um, is it, is it interpolation? I don't know. <laughs> like it's, it's hard to, yeah, I, I don't know. I think, yeah, I don't know. Okay, whatever. Um, if this was empty and I would put nothing in here, this board name would be undefined. Template string. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> Interpolation is something totally different, right? I'm just making stuff up. Okay. <laughs> template string. Yeah. So if you use template string and this board name variable is undefined, then uh, then uh, it would actually interpret as a text undefined. So watch this. When I save this, it's going to type undefined enter. But if I would not use the template string, thank you very much. <laughs> and I would just type it like this, which would be the, the yeah, that was the first uh, way of typing that I, I knew. Uh, if you want to combine a, a variable and and something else, then I think, no, it still types undefined. Oh, okay, okay, I did something slightly different yesterday. So I, I would go type and type the board name and in the other type, I would type enter. And this I think was problem because if it was just variable that is undefined, it would do nothing. Yeah, okay, so now this, this actually gives us an error. Um, so it seems like, yeah, the, the, this type, um, yeah, if I, if I have at least some string and this is undefined, then it's okay. If I would put it into the template string, then I think that would, that would actually type in undefined. So that was, that was like a slight difference, a, a little thing that I didn't know about. I think that was, that was interesting. Um, okay. So. So obviously when I'm using TypeScript, I should probably add some types. So let's, let's just define it as a string. I think that's good enough for intentions of these demonstrations. And, and this is also, this is undefined, but, um, uh, uh, yeah, actually we have time. Let's, let's do that. Let's. Let's uh, add this to our CY global object so we can so we can get that sweet uh, autocomplete. I wrote a blog about this, so if you if you like to if you like to read about about that, you can check out the the website and uh, search for TypeScript. You're going to find uh, find some explanations there. But basically, there are two ways of how you can approach this. The first one, the one that you can find on documentation is that you would create these commands uh, definitions file. So as you can see, I already have some definitions over here and I can, uh, yeah, and I can uh, do that. Now, uh, I was just doing it like a copycat I didn't really understand too much. So what I did like when I wanted to add uh, a new command that would be the add board and just copy and I didn't I totally didn't understand this part so but this part actually and this is the function this is what we are uh, what we uh, get as a parameter what we can use as a parameter the type of what that should be 
And this part is actually what that uh, function returns. And, and I actually don't need that, although TypeScript is going to complain, I think. There is something over here. Oh yeah, I, I turned off those hover thingies. Let me, let me just enable them uh, for a second. Hover enabled. Uh, true, oh, true. So now when I hover, yeah, there it is. So it complains that it implicitly has any return type, so that's that's like no good. Um, but we can either use this chainable uh, type, which is from Cypress, and we can. So that means we can chain off our uh, custom command, and what uh, what uh, we are chaining off is. What we are returning can be like it can be an element, it can be a request, it can, it can be uh, lots of things. You can actually look into that chainable. And now, when I look, uh, yeah, there are a couple of things. And to be honest, I don't really understand uh, much of this. But I have used, yeah, I have used element, element, that is the one I have been using. I have been using response, response, yeah, I think that's pretty useful. And was I using anything else? Not sure. But I think we can keep it void for now. Or we can just do any. And I can see that I have already created a, um, a command like this. But let's just stick to, to this one. Uh, so, okay, so this is like the definition. And one strategy would be like, put everything in your commands definition file. And the other would be like, try to, to basically have your TypeScript definitions inside each of your commands. But then you need to, but you also need to like connect it to the Cypress uh, namespace and to to like the whole chainable interface, so so that you can use it actually in in your commands. So you want to type cy dot and your custom command, and to do that you 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 need to do this. You need to like uh, declare that that this belongs to this namespace. Oh yeah, <laughs> hi, hi, Vishal, Vishal, I'm sorry, I'm probably not pronouncing your name right. Uh, yeah, I'm happy that you're happy <laughs> to, to see me. I wasn't actually really regularly online because I was, uh, yeah, uh, I have a, I have seven year, seven year, seven month year, uh, old baby. And um, I mean, she is awesome but <laughs> she decided that this is going to be her room which is you know partially true <laughs> but uh, that made my streaming more complicated uh all right back to back to commands so i have defined this and it's still oh yeah it is complaining but now there's a different problem so the the different problem is that we're expecting one argument but we got zero so now it is uh, now is oh you're so nice <laughs> thank you uh, so now what we need to do is to to give it some uh, some some argument and if I put number in there it's still going to complain because it's expecting string and not a number so let's type a string and now it's now it's okay so that is that is awesome right so I think that that that's actually I mean, it's hard to navigate through TypeScript sometimes, especially in the beginning. Um, it's, it's, it's hard for me too. I mean, uh, I'm no no pro in uh, in TypeScript, uh, but once you get over that initial mm, like the 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 initial obstacles, I think that's uh, yeah. I, I think it's worth it. Um, 
but I'll I'll see. I mean, I'm still in the beginning of the journey, so uh, maybe maybe I find out that it's actually not worth it. We'll see. Okay, so so yeah, logging. That's what we are in here for today, uh, or at least that's what I promised. But I'm getting sidetracked, distracted. Uh, okay, so there it is. There is this Cypress log API, and uh, as an argument, you can give it an object, and basically what it will do is that it will give your custom command some um, some attributes. So, for example, that would be name. Let's start with name, and name will be at board. Good enough. Now, when I save my test, you can see that I have add board. Oh, and nice! It has automatically put in the the number over here. That's nice. I I always thought that I I have to put it in manually. So what I would do is that I would use the message. Yeah, message property, and and that would be the board name, board name. Now you can see it's there. So if I change it, hello, save my test, then it's here. But it seems like it actually it actually goes automatically. I bet that is mostly when you only have like one parameter, probably. Uh, all right, so yeah. So the other thing, somebody is writing me on Discord. Uh, I'll get to that later. So yeah, so let's let's say that um, okay. So every time we 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 create a new new board, there there's an API called, and we get redirected to the new board. So wouldn't it be nice if we like clicked on this custom command and inside our console we actually had we actually would have like the URL for the for the board. That would be nice because maybe we want to debug that and like just clicking on the link might might help. Obviously not in this test because we are ending our test uh, on the link but I mean Let's imagine like we go back and forth all around and at some point we want to go back and try to see like what's uh, what was here, what was the URL of this board that we have created. Um, by the way, you can find this app on GitHub. That's an app I, I made for my workshops and stuff like that. And, and yeah, exciting news. I'm going to be... Um, I'm going to have a course on Test Automation University uh, soon, and I am using this app to to test there. So watch out for that. Uh, I have a I have a tool here, and as you can see, it's kind of broken here. But if I type um, F2 uh, like the key, uh, I have this like a re reset application tool here. So if I want to delete all the boards, lists, users, and stuff like that. I can just click uh, on this and it's going to reset my app. Uh, it's it's basically to make, make life of um, whoever is attending a workshop or, or watching a course uh, much easier. Uh, yeah, so here it is. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, we want to get that URL. So let's let's see that. Let's go ahead and type cy URL, and let's just console log it out. So I'm going to type then, and I'll type URL, pass a function, and just go console log URL. So we are expanding our ad board, right? So we got this URL, you can see it here, and if I open my console, it's console logging out localhost 3000 because <laughs> I'm actually not, uh, yeah, I actually finished my test 
too soon. So let's put an assertion here. Expect URL to contain what should we contain? Uh, it should contain board. Yeah. Oops. And when we now log this out, yeah, that's that's the full URL. So that was interesting point, right? So we want our. Oh, actually, I'm kind of surprised that this this has passed. Why hasn't it passed before? Is this the right URL? Seems so. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting how we got to that local host. Or did I just see it? Didn't didn't I write it well enough? I'm kind of confused now. Okay, so now it outputs the whole URL. But we were in a situation where we would just get the local host without the board and the ID of that of that URL. So that's I mean it can certainly happen. Yeah, because we are not waiting for anything. We are just we go type enter and then we go straight ahead to checking the URL. And we wanna console log it out. So this um pause between these two these two commands can be quite quite small and we can definitely get to a situation where we would uh, like check this URL too soon. So that's what I uh, that's why I uh, put the the expect there. But as I said, I would ex uh, it still could fail um, because with then command then will actually it doesn't have that retry logic that uh, most of the Cypress commands have. So what would happen is that if this URL was just localhost and didn't include like the whole path, uh, it would just console log out the, the localhost 3000 and, uh, and the end. So if I would want to make sure that uh, that the URL is is good, let me just go like this then I would need to use shoot. And shoot can actually accept uh, um, a function. So if this wouldn't pass, you, it would retry. And it would have that retry uh, loop for those four seconds or even more, depends on how, how you have that set up. But by default, it's, it's four seconds. Mm, all right, I'm I'm going to, yeah, I'm not going to consider that for a moment. Let's see if it happens again. That kind of surprised me, but yeah. Mm, okay, I'll leave it like that. Get back to the log. So what we want to do here is that when we click on this add board, our new custom command, we want to make sure that our our URL is going to be printed out here. So let's do that. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> and we are going to do it like this. I'm going to declare a new variable that's going to be called board URL. That's the first step. The second step would be to add console props and it's going to be a function and it's going to return an object. Return an object. And it's going to return this board URL. So if I would leave it like this, the board URL would just, would just return undefined. Uh, but we can uh, tell this Cypress log thing to actually not finish. So let's do that auto auto end is going to be set to false. False. By default it's set to true. 
and let me show you what what this does so when I save this still have my custom command in here you'll see that it's it's hanging in the loading state it's not finishing at all so yeah this is what the auto end does so what we need to do is to make it make it finish at some point oh sorry like as you can see like the test is going to finish it's going to pass that's that's all good but we're not finishing this command so let's let's make it finish and to make it finish we need to call a function that is called uh, end and I was experimenting with that and it seems like there is no way uh, no different way just than just to use const and name it log or anything else and just assign the cypress log to to this I actually saw this um, saw this on the webinar that uh, Cypress did. I, I actually mentioned it, mentioned that in my in my blog. It's it's full of uh, full of uh, cool tricks and patterns and stuff like that. I suggest you check it out. Um, it was great. It was great webinar, and they were talking about logs. So uh, I got this one from from there. So I assign uh, the Cypress log to uh, constant that's going to call be called log and when I have that URL uh, I'm going to log end so delete this console log and we're not using the URL now but we'll get to that in a second so now when I save this you can see that the command has finished you can watch it again if you if you like so when I save it after the URL is finished our command is going to finish too so you can see that this is still loading our our other commands are going through our application and when this URL is resolved our ad board is resolved too so it's really fast but maybe you spotted it uh, all right so we have created quite a few boards here but and I can definitely delete them by by that shortcut but let's I'm going to add a request here that's another thing about my app since I have created it I can do anything I want so I created this reset endpoint that's going to do the exact same thing so it's going to reset the whole app and now like every time we start we start with a clean uh, clean board okay uh, good so let's let's do this okay so we want that board URL to be assigned to the um, to the URL that is created so that's actually pretty easy we just say board URL it's going to have the value of our URL so what we are doing here is that we have our URL command and that is actually going to give us back our like the URL that we are on uh, it's going to pass this on this then command and inside our then, then command we are we are doing some stuff right so we are assigning that URL to to the variable so let's save that bam and now when we look oh the snapshot is missing displaying current state of the op. let's okay let's see what our console says oh we are actually we're actually okay yeah we're not doing any snapshots but we can oh we can do some but you can see that our board URL is already here so we got it that's great so when I click on it it's going to no resource with given URL font oh yeah it's just going just trying to like redirect me to the to like an internal resource or source but if I just type it I I have it here all right so let's yeah let's talk about those snapshots so 
we can this log yeah the cypress log uh, similarly to what we did here uh, the log end we can actually we can actually do something else we can uh, add uh, snapshots so let's let's type let's add a snapshot here so let's do I actually haven't mentioned this too much in uh, in my blog so let's experiment a little so I'm going to add a snapshot and the argument is a name of the snapshot so let's name that before uh, yeah okay let's add another snapshot and then we what are we going to call that uh, let's we call that input then we, what else are we going to do Should we do the do it like this? Add the after state. Let's see. We'll add three snapshots. See what happens. Okay, let's look into our command. And yeah, okay, so we got a state before. We got the input state, which seems to be the same. <laughs> and the after it's all the same. Okay, so this is not is not what we ha what we wanted maybe we need to make sure that that we do the snapshot after after the action is done so let's let's wrap it inside the then function uh, yeah then maybe this will work we'll see we have definitely created those snapshots, but it, they seem to be at the same moment. So before, input, after. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's it. Nice. So we got three, three states. So before we do anything, then after we clicked on the input and then after. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's okay. We can maybe add another snapshot over here name it url let's see before input after url oh after and url seems to be the same i wanted to like <laughs> before we ran this uh, we were here at a at loading state and now we are at url and they they seem to be the same now um and again, like that's that's the result of the test going way too fast. So mm, before I had that, before I added the the last snapshot, and I just had this one, I saw the loading state in the after snapshot. Um, but uh, so it seems like this this get API uh, that is that is over here that it it didn't like finish. So yeah. Mm, all right. Uh, yeah, so we have created a couple of snapshots. We have added a couple of logs. So that's that's all nice. Um, the other thing I was talking about uh, in my blog was uh, creating a custom uh, custom element. So let's now let's now let's now not reset. And I have created this custom selector that I called take. So I'm going to create a custom command. So I press commands, add, it's called take. And for now, let's just, um, <laughs> let's just call it selector. Let me show you what I want to do. So in my app, I have a couple of these data CY selectors. So I have put them all over the all over the application, and just to make my life easier, so I can select them with selector playground. But it's actually a good habit to to have those and to put those into your app because mm, yeah, because 
these data selectors are only for testing, right? Only for our end-to-end -end tests. They don't add any style to, to, um, to your application. They are not there to improve accessibility. Uh, they're just so that test knows where to go. And that's good. So, but whenever I, whenever I want to get it, like over here on this line, I'm typing the whole uh, brackets, uh, data, CY, create board and stuff like that. And what I would want to ideally do is just to go create board. So that's what I want to uh, this take element uh, to be. So let's so it's just going to wrap our get command and that's going to be uh, data cy and it's going to it's going to take that selector selector all right and if we go create board then it should select this element let's do that good we got it all right so that was that was pretty easy right so but let's let's add some custom logging over here let's actually make uh, make this element different from the from the get so I'll add my Cypress log object here and what I want to do is to have the name of my my command to be to be take right so I got it we get take create board all is good with the world um, except when I hover over my get element and when I hover over my take element they're actually different um, when I hover over the get element I, I get this nice highlight so I want that highlight right <laughs> so let's do that let's give our command uh, a highlight and again I'm going to use um, assign this to a constant so that would be a log constant and I'm going to do something after I get after I select my element I'm going to do something uh, what am I going to do just yeah element I'm just going to select that element and I will do log set and this is actually going to set uh, something to my uh, log I'm not not entirely sure that I need to have console properties function here not sure let's see okay but it will be an element and it will have the value of this element and this is yeah this is basically uh, telling that here there's going to be an element and it will have a value of element that's just a short short uh, version of that so let's save this and now when I hover over I don't see anything so maybe do, do, do. oh yeah I probably need to need to add that auto end to false pretty sure so after I set that let's go log and end and I think I also need to like add a snapshot although I'm not 100% sure could it be yeah probably let's let's add a snapshot log snapshot Let's see. Okay, I got it. 
So I got my take command that's highlighting my create board. I got get command that's also highlighting the create board. So they seem to be the same. Uh, there is a slight difference, however. The first one is that we also got this information of elements and selector, and we also got the information of what it has yielded. And our take command is just the take command. So that's that's kind of sad. So if we would, uh, if we want to be precise, and we want uh, what's happening? Oh, my keyboard is kind of lagging behind. Yeah, okay, we're good now. Okay, so if we were to do log false here, and and I would save my test, we would, uh, yeah, we have that highlight, and that's nice, but we are now uh, losing that uh, that other information. So that's that's not enough for us, right? We want to we want to have that information, and. Um, we want to see how many elements we got. We want to see uh, what the selector was. And we also want to see, um, yeah, what, what the command is yielded. So we are going to use those console props. Console props. And that is a function and is going to return and an object. And let's just, for the sake of trying this out, let's just keep it this for, for a moment. And what we wanted here. We want to have, uh, well, the selector. But that's easy, because we have that selector. So I think we should be good now Now that I save it. Look into the take. Okay, we got the selector. Um, or maybe we should call it like data cy selector. Would that be nicer? What do you think? I don't know. I kind of like it. Hey, Mache. Nice to see you. Um, okay, so we got selector and we want what else we are missing is elements and yield it. So let's start with elements. And I think that should be pretty easy. Let's type elements and we do the same strategy as we did with the add board. So I'm going to create a variable that's going to be called elements. That is going to be a type of number. And what we want to do here is that we want to uh, assign elements to this L length. Yeah, I think that should be about enough. What are you complaining about? Oh, okay, I forgot. Come on. Okay. So now that I save it, I click into my get. Looks okay. Elements one. Let's select a, let's select something that's that we have more of. So the mm -hmm, the board item is this also board item? No, it doesn't seem to be. Oh, just let's yeah, let's select just. Oh no, we yeah we need to have data attributes. So yeah, so let's select. Let's create a new board. Oh, I'm actually going to keep that. And select, uh, what would this be? Data ID. Why data ID? Ugh. It's failing me. Let's look into the board item, the data. Oh, it's called board item. Good. It actually shouldn't be preferring data ID. I'm pretty sure it should prefer data CY. I mean, it is, you can configure it. It's possible to configure that, but, oh yeah, I, I looked into that. 
you can actually see that in the console. So when I type Cypress selector playground, and there's this function get selector priority that will give you the priority of how it's going to choose selectors. So data, CY data test, data test, ID, ID class. Mm, I don't see like data ID over here, so I'm not sure why. Why is it preferring data ID? But I mean, yeah, I don't really care. Um, but it's interesting because I don't see that anything a anywhere. So like on the number zero, the, the top priority is data CY. So, okay, anyway, back to our elements. So we want to, I want to check if the, if whether the elements length is when it is two, that it actually works. So the board item. So we, when we select board item, it should find two, seems it does, and the elements is two. Okay, that's great. So the other thing is yield it, yield it. And we want to add another, and that would be yield it. And the type, uh, I'm going to leave the type for now. Uh, and the type, yeah, that is actually the reason why I left it. Actually, not going to leave it. Uh, I'm actually, actually going to type it because that's that is an interesting one. I actually struggled with that uh, for a couple of moments uh, when I was writing my blog, and it's it's interesting because if I would just type uh, yield it uh, that it is what it is, the element. I don't think that would, yeah, let, let's just try that. If I would do this, then you can see that the take, when what it, uh, it has yielded, you can see it works. But the format over here is slightly different than what we have here. And I kind of like this one more. Yeah, I think it's pretty neat. You just have the array of your two elements and I think if I would try to use the take function and the yielding uh, would do something different, yeah, I think I would be surprised what, mm, what it does and maybe I would not get the same results. So I dug a little into this and I looked into the documentation and I looked into the Cypress code and because I wanted to figure out how this get command actually works. And there's this nice little tool in, in Cypress docs. And I kind of overlooked it for, for quite a long time, for a long time, because I didn't think much of it. Like, why would I even use it? Or was it utilities? No. Cypress API, yeah, the DOM. So it's a collection of DOM related helper methods. And I was like, okay, but why should I use it? <laughs> this didn't seem like much to me. Uh, but in the background, uh, this uh, DOM is actually used uh, quite a lot. Uh, we suggest reading through the source code here to see all the methods and what they do. So there's this, uh, yeah, there's this DOM package uh, inside the source code of, uh, of uh, Cypress and it's used quite a lot, at least for the, for the part that I was looking into. And yeah, it was, it was interesting. So, but there is this function and I think it was get element to do do. I forgot. I got it in my blog. Let's let's just jump into that. It was in the bottom over here. So get elements. Cypress get elements L. So this is what I this is what I I'm going to use. So it's going to be Cypress 
uh, get elements uh, no cypress dom get elements and that is actually going to take this uh, whole jQuery part and put it into those into that nice formatting that we have in our get command so I got the result that I that I wanted and here it is yield it two items our get command sealing the same two items all is good with the world so here we got all of our properties and here again we got all of our properties so it's behaving exactly the same and I'm happy happy with the result so now I can go log false save my test and just have my take element and that's great one more thing about this so when I when I reset my application and I retry and I don't have any element what's going to happen is that my take uh, command will actually never finish and that is because as I mentioned if I'm using the auto and false uh, attributes then I need to finish that command and if I don't then this is going to happen I mean it's not it's not bad it's not the worst thing uh, our test is still behaving properly it's still going to fail when it doesn't find any element so we can be happy with that but this is just confusing right and also we don't have the snapshot because we're doing the snapshot over here and we don't get highlight well of course we don't get highlight because we don't have a highlight uh, but yeah we're missing some information over here so how about we handle that and I go back to my blog because I don't remember <laughs> I actually do but uh, yeah so there's this on uh, command that is actually uh, used for tapping into into various Cypress uh, events and there is this fail event which is going to happen every time a test fails so I can actually use that to define the behavior of my uh, custom command on on uh, on failure so what I want to do is to lock error and I want to end that uh, logging and then I want to throw that error so we get everything so I can type it here down below it doesn't really matter for this command so I'll go on fail just move it up and I'm going to pass that error similarly to what I did in, in the blog so let uh, I want to have that error and this error type is actually not exposed uh, but that doesn't doesn't really matter so we want to end if if our command fails we want to end logging and then of course we want to throw that error so we don't like change anything and the behavior of whenever an error happens will stay the same so now when I save this and it's not going to find any element we got yeah we got our error everything is same our uh, our custom command is actually in red so it's not hanging anymore and when I look into the console and look over here we got error of yeah so we got the whole error we got data selector in the command snapshot snapshot is missing can we make a snapshot over here so we take a snapshot call that error maybe I don't know let's see ah hitting the wrong key and we got a snapshot of the state of when we didn't find anything yeah I think that's good okay um, 
All right, so uh, one more thing we can do. How how long are we here? For one hour. Yeah, okay, we can we can take a, a couple of minutes more. So uh, what I like to do with this take command, I actually use that in my work. Uh, it's it's named named slightly differently, but yeah, it's a it's a take uh, command. The, the the thing is the same. But uh, if you have ever created a custom command, then you might already know that there are actually three types of commands you can do. You can do a parent command, a child command, or a dual command. So if you pass in an object as a second parameter, you can tell whether the previous subject, that would be the thing that you want, you can tell whether it is uh, whether that is optional or did I? I thought yeah oh okay got it <laughs> whether it is optional or whether it is uh, true or false I think by default it's just false it just doesn't take a previous uh, uh, argument but if I if I do this I can actually make my take command a uh, dual command. So if there's anything uh, before my command, so for example, if I would first have a get command and I would, I don't know, select, what would I select here? Maybe I would select the whole body or board, background container. Okay, let's select background container then it would actually look for a board item only inside this element um, so that's what I that is what I am doing with that command but if it like doesn't have a command before that it's just going to behave like a normal parent command and it's going to just look for anything that is in inside the DOM let's uh, let's do that so what I need to do here is is basically to add a condition so if there's a if there's a, do, do, do. oh yeah let me let me look into the documentation because I forgot it it's we need to pa uh, pass two parameters here I actually forgot to type those uh, it's not that important right now but yeah let's look into the cypress commands and custom commands here it is let me actually make this bigger okay so okay to do the parent dual commands that's what we want yeah okay so we got cypress command out previous subject is optional and the first argument will be subject and if there is a subject then use that and if there's not then do something else so that's what we are going to do but I need to pass the subject here subject so now we have two arguments for our command for our take command the first one would be subject and the second one would be the selector and so if we have subject if subject then we are going to do something and if we don't then basically everything is going to stay the same so let's do this now let's just check if if everything so far is working the same way it should let's do that oh we should have created a board but uh, yeah we can look into the error that seems to be working in the same way okay let's create a board and we got a board so let's rerun our test and yeah that seems to be working all good 
So let's let's do this case now. Let's so for so if we have a subject before our take command, then we do something else, and it's not going to be all that different from from what we do here. Uh, basically, what we need to do first is we need to wrap our subject subject <laughs> and after that we want to make sure that we find only within the context of that subject so for that I think a find command should be good enough let's do that oh I saved that but I'm actually actually not using anything let's let's do this okay so yeah we got our get and we're fine we're looking for a board item inside that and we got our wrap command so we can add lock false to that so we got this cleaner output here okay and as you can see, if it's a child command, it's actually have that minus sign that you're probably familiar with if you if you're working with parent and child commands and stuff like that. Uh, one more thing uh, we got in our take command, we got our yield it. That's all good. But uh, whenever we are working with a child command, then there's also this applied to um, uh, thing over here so we know the context of where we are actually applying our our command so we should probably have that in in our log and I think we can just go and do log and maybe set I wonder because yeah what we are doing here normally is to use that let uh, yeah, I think I need to just do uh, apply it. Yeah, let's do it like this. So it's going to be applied. And what we are going to do is is, is, is that our applied, applied will be equal to subject. Yeah, I think that's good enough. So applied. Uh, let's call that actually applied to. So it's like similar to to what what Cypress does. And now when I save that, I think I should be okay. So click on my take applied to. Oh, okay. It's still this um, this weird thing. So let's actually use this Cypress Dome get elements thing over here. So let's copy that. I'm going to yeah, not like this. It needs to be subject. All right. I think we are we are good. Yield it, apply it to background container. That is good. Now I'm happy. <laughs> and yeah, what it has yielded, this div element. That's good. We have applied it to this background container. That is good. Overall, I'm happy. I'm satisfied. <laughs> so this is actually one unit of a of a custom command right so if we have subject we do one thing if we uh, if we don't have subject we do other thing we got failure handling and we got uh, custom log properties so quite a lot uh, happening let's yeah let's just uh, fix these uh, and I have these in my in my blog already so I'm just going to copy that from from there but what we want to do is to give those things proper types and 
basically what we are going to be doing here is yeah so the element is either a jQuery HTML element or it's an array of elements so and that actually goes for applied to so let's let's do let's do them together so that would be jQuery query was that yeah query HTML element or it can be an HTML HTML element array and uh, let apply it why is this why does it have this color yeah okay I forgot to close this okay good so we got this and subject if a subject is um, here then it's also that that will also be a jQuery type or it can be a string and actually it cannot be a string can it be a string oh yeah I think it can be a string and the selector I'm actually going uh, from memory now and I and I know that I have it defined like this but if you would ask me now why is it like this I would probably have hard time explaining but I think it is because this subject is actually very strange because you can have it or not um, which is not something you usually have with if you write a function if you have couple of parameters then you I don't think you can be in a situation where the first one is optional and the second one would be like not optional um, I think not sure but uh, yeah and that's why I wrote it like this so the first one is either a jQuery so the, the yielded thing uh, or it's a string and that would be our selector oh sorry and if we have two then the second one will definitely be a string and the first one will be a jQuery so I think this is the proper way to write it although I'm not 100% uh, sure so yeah we got that now our subject is being underlined and what's the problem argument of type string jQuery is not assignable to jQuery HTML element Mm -hmm. okay so it says like it's not so this has to be just a jQuery HTML element so when I do that what's going to happen with our take command do, do, do. it does not exist on type changeable uh, that is because we are not defining that yet yeah this is too too complicated for me now um, not really sure what should I do like I should yeah I should definitely like add this command to my definitions file so let's do that oh my ABC So let's yeah let's add it over here. It's going to be uh, take command. It's going to take what? Oh, I kind of need to duplicate this, right? So the subject. I think it's like this. And chainable element. Yeah, I'm getting confused over here, but it seems like this has solved the error. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm. Oh, but now it's now this is what's happening. Argument of type string is not assignable to HTML elements. So if I make this optional and type string, 
Now this is going to com <laughs> complain, okay. And yeah, but I didn't define that in the commands. So let's maybe do it like this. String. And now it's still complaining. Type string or jQuery HTML is not assignable to the parameter type jQuery element. Mm hmm. All right. So it's like, yeah, it's complaining that these get elements mm, is should only be should only be uh, like this jQuery element. It cannot be string. So we got ourselves into a little bit of conflict of what to do here. And I don't really know. Honestly, like I would probably just ignore it. Uh, well, I would not ignore it. I'm I'm curious about this, but I don't like want to like silence off for uh, half an hour and try to figure out what would be the <laughs> best way to handle this. So for now, I'm going to ignore that, and and I'll see what what I should do. Well, we got an, uh, another error here. Uh, like it says that property error does not exist on the type block, but that's just like uh, it's not exposed here. But it's there. Obviously, you can see that. Um, all right, so that was a little bit about creating custom commands. I think we can finish this off uh, for now. This was fun. So hopefully, hopefully we'll get some uh, get some more streams. I'd actually like to stream uh, this week, uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after tomorrow. Uh, I'm kind of uh, home alone at uh, at the moment, so maybe I I will get uh, I'll take that chance and uh, try to create create something for you guys. Uh, all right, so thank you very much for coming. This was this was fun, and see you next time. I'll let you know when that will be. Nice. All right. Have a great day, week, anything. Bye bye.